All right, YouTube video number two. I had to get in the car. It's freezing cold outside. It's like uh, sticking to the stash there. Anyway, if I get it all, uh, I look pretty free, y'all. All right. So, second thing I want to talk to you about was I've been hearing a lot of people talk about martial law. And <clears throat> martial law is a very real thing. Um... Also, you have to know that they, the government itself doesn't have the resources to put the country in martial law. But I just want to give you my food for thought, right? There's lots of schools of thought on this. I just want to give you my food for thought because the most recent martial law that I've taken a part in in America has been Panama City, Florida, uh, Panama City Beach for Hurricane Michael. So my job is... I chase these storms, and so I'm inside all of these natural disasters, and I have been since 2011, I believe. And so I go from one to another every year. There's something that we go to. I interact regularly with FEMA. I interact regularly with local officials. Um, and I've had some good and bad interactions with both of them, right? So here's what I've learned in 2019 style okay it is not the time of hurricane katrina so we do remember a lot of gun confiscation a lot of bad issues in hurricane katrina it's not like that anymore as a matter of fact you're more likely to see the governor come on and say we encourage you whether you have a license or not to carry concealed and you're not going to be in any trouble for doing so so I believe that martial law after a grid down event will look a lot the same as what it does now. And why wouldn't it? Like, you can't buy into a conspiracy theory that every single FEMA worker is has some conspiracy. You have to look at what is the actual reality. And what the actual reality is, is they use the local state and government, the local police, sheriff, and National Guard to lock down your city. And they don't lock it down by going door to door. They just shut everything down. They, they at what I think it's like 7 in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, you can't be out past that. And there was one of the nights that we were there that we were out past 9 o'clock and they stopped us. Two different cops stopped us. We told them that we were on the way to, the, to our camper. You know, nobody has any power down there. Nobody has any food. The National Guard will set up and start feeding you from their location, MREs or whatever that they have on hand, which they have a little. Um, and so, you know, if it happens on a nationwide scale, you're not going to be able to see the amount of law enforcement there. But what you're going to see is every individual city will lock down their city. Uh, they will put a curfew out. They will be driving around if the vehicles still work. Um, which if you do a lot of research on EMP, vehicles are still going to work, right? So even in a regular grid down situation. So you say, oh no, uh, they won't have any gas. Well, the city will, right? The city's going to have gas. They'll, they will take all of the gas around you. Um, they'll, they'll find a way to get it out of pumps. Um, and so what will you have? You will have the city law enforcement, the city national guard, city volunteers that are ex-military, ex-police officers. Um, they're all going to come together and they will, you know, cook for each other. They will take care of each other. They'll take care of the city the best they can. And they'll try to keep crime from rising. That's the kind of martial law that you're going to see um, for a long period of it up until the point where they lose control. Um, there will come a point, two, three, four months down the road where they lose control or a group comes and rises up against them. But in the very beginning of it, what you're going to see is a couple of days of somebody not knowing really what's going on. Then the government officials get together. They will, I don't know that they'll actually lock down the city, but they'll put a curfew. They'll have cops running. They won't give them any days off. They'll run 24-7, 12-hour shifts. Um... And, and they'll switch and, you know, you'll have cops in the day, you'll have cops in the night. Um, they will, anybody that's proficient with a gun or any tactics, they will, and, and willing, they will put you in a cop car with them or, you know, mark your car as patrol and, and let you help keep the peace. And for the most part, most people will keep the peace. They, they don't want to fight and they won't when it first goes down. And I, I think they won't for a month month and a half, maybe two months. 
Um, I could be wrong, but these people that I've, I've been around in these storms, you know, they lose their cell phones, they lose their internet, uh, they lose power, they lose it all. They can't get gas. Um, they have to eat, you know, uh, what is it? The, um, American Red Cross and the, what's the other one besides the Red Cross? Salvation Army. They go out and feed you. Um, the military will go out and give you MREs. That's all going to happen. So I think that's what you'll see. You'll see the local National Guard, the Sheriff's Department, whatever state police are actually in that town that live there. Um, the local police, local volunteers, city workers, they will shut the city down the best they can, put it under curfew. They're probably not going to take your guns. Some may, but for the most part, they're not going to take your guns. They're not going to take your food. They're not going to go door to door. They're just going to try to keep everybody calm. They will probably hold town hall meetings every night for a while, then every other night, then every week um, where, you know, you're getting together, you're talking, you're you're working with each other. You're trying to rebuild that community. Um, I see that happening a lot. Now, where does that play out for you? Well, you just saw my Montana video, and if you didn't, you should go back and you should check out my Montana video um, where I'm here in the Bitterroot, how cold it is, and how difficult it would be to bug out to a new area. And I'll go over a couple different areas because I have, I've had the, the, uh, the, I guess the fortune to go to a lot of different states with my job over the last, you know, 10, 12 years. And so I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of different cultures. I've seen a lot of different landscapes. And I've done it with the with the mental preparedness of being a prepper. Um, so I want you to I want you to think about that. I want you to, you know, just we will do what we know how to do right now. And what we know how to do right now is put people under curfew, uh, try to gather and try to come to a safe spot as a community. And I think that will be what you see at the start of martial law. Um, it will, it will be different. You know, some places will be a little different. New York city, um, you know, that might be a little tougher. Although you do have to remember that the, the snowflakes of this world, the one thing that they're really good at is making friends. They have a lot of friends and they're very, um, complacent work together um, they're, they're actually, if you need to work, they're not afraid to work. So, um, you know, I, I hate down and millennials in a, in a, in a full sense because they've got a lot of great qualities, but one of the qualities that I know is they make a lot of friends really fast. And so they don't, they're, they don't really have the testosterone to push through. So they will kind of bond together in these big cities. I think a lot better than you think, um, now, this is an encouragement. This isn't going against people because I, I think what what we're missing is like uh, I was listening to Bear Independent today and he said, you know, if you had a response, make a video. So I guess here's my response, Bear. Everything he said will happen after what I said. That's That's how I think. I think there may be that, you know, two week to... I don't know, 60, 90 days of the community actually trying to bond together and make it. And then what you'll see is those community leaders getting a little too pow too much power to their head. And then you'll see them having, uh, you know, breaking up into groups, clans, and you might see a takeover, a coup with that group. Um, but I think that's what you're going to see at first. And that, that can be very deceiving in that you're going to think, because you're a part of that, hey, we have law enforcement now, we have food, we, you know, it looks like everything's going to be okay. And the longer you sit and stay and wait, the the more you're like that boiling frog, right? Throw him in a cold bottle, pot of water and turn it up until he boils. That's, that's kind of where you're going to be. So that first, you know, little bit, you're going to think that it's okay and they're doing the right thing. And in reality, a lot of those cities will be fine. A strong leader will, will come out. Um, they will probably purge and get rid of a lot of people that, that can't help them, don't help them, or cause problems. And you'll see those little communities thrive um, until you see the, uh, uh, like the book One Second After, where you see roving gangs where that, that city's used up. You know, a year into it, they can't do anything else. So now they move to the next city, to the next city, to the next city. I think um, that'll be the beginning of what you see. So uh, just some food for thought. I don't know what you're going to do with that information. You know, just, just the way that I see it going is 
we're going to do what we already know how to do. And that's what they know how to do. And I'm, I'm not going to say they're good at it. I just know that that's what they know how to do. Anyway, until we talk again, guys, think about it.